Oh man, finally that monster is done. I can have a teensy weensy little break before I dig into all these Patreon albums that people have been so patiently waiting for. Oh god damn it! Mother fu fuck you, Jesse Lacey! A surprise album? Really? Right now? When I'm in the middle? Oh! Oh, you asshole! You goddamn sons of bitches! I, I would arrest you if I had handcuffs. Fuck! I swear to God, artists do this surprise album thing intentionally just to fuck with all of us who have to work around the music industry release schedule. Oy. But, you know, in this particular instance, with Brand New's latest, our first full release from the band in at least eight years, and from what I understand, maybe their last, I can actually see why they would release this as a surprise and forgo the whole release half the album as singles across three months formula. This album... It's different. It's so different. After spinning this thing a handful of times, my big question is, what song would they release as a single off of this? I mean, really, this album is not what I was expecting, and I cannot be the only one here, especially given what we heard from these guys on those teensy little morsels we got from them last year, like I Am A Nightmare and The Mean. Thing. I figured Brand New was revving up their engines to explode back into old form, but no, that appears to not be their intention here. This album has a much different feel going on. Songs like Can't Get It Out, 137, Out of Mana, and particularly that second to last track, 451, do have their moments when the guitars squelch and blister through their amps. But that's the thing, those high intensity moments are just that. Moments. This album is not as interested in peeling the paint off the walls as other brand new albums have done. It doesn't really have a Sick Transit Gloria or Yeah or Vices where the song just rips you out of your seat and throws you up against the wall. No, 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 no. This album has a whole other MO. This album is weirdly subdued. It's cold, clinical oddly clean and sterile feeling right up from Lit Me Up, the opening track. The very first things we hear on this album are slow, droning, strung out bass line, while a middle-aged sounding woman informs us that this tape is the recount of a dream. And man, I could not have put it better. This is easily the most atmospheric, heady, and surreal feeling album they ever put out. And you know, Brand New had a certain panache with that, but Never to this degree, this is basically taking the more mystical parts of the devil and god are raging inside me and upping the dosage to just below an OD. It's a trip. The guitar work leans much heavier on chorus and delay effects, and the bass is deep and fuzzy, like ludicrously deep. It's downright punishing. I'm not scared this album is trying to brown note me. And science fiction is interspersed with all kinds of foreboding, sinister sounding synth work, oftentimes overcut with static distortion, reversed audio, and the sounds of voices either too droning, too distant, or too muffled to really make out clearly. They feel like something from a half-remembered thought or a hungover dream. To hell with science fiction, this album feels more like psychological thriller. Waste has the feel of waking up in a hospital bed after an overdose and an out-of-body experience. Could Never Be Heaven feels reminiscent of Failure's more wistful works. Desert and 451 feel like the anthems of a paranoid schizophrenic who watches Infowars and actually takes that shit seriously. And 137? A number with heavy significance in physics and Kabbalah, of all things, feels like watching the world end from front row center seats. Guys, were any of you expecting this from the new brand new album? Like, wow, dear God, what I wouldn't give to go back in time and give those emo kids bouncing around to Jude Law in a semester abroad a copy of this thing just to watch their heads explode. This album, it's unique, but I will be goddamned if I don't fucking adore it. I love, love this thing. This album is for certain gonna be a best of the year contender, but full disclosure, it actually wasn't at first. It took me a few good listens. People, this album serves as the perfect, perfect example of a record that I call a grower. This is something 
that doesn't hit you all at first, but it sticks with you. This thing, especially if you're a brand new fan expecting something a bit more brand new -y, might not settle with you at first. Honestly, this is one of those albums where I wouldn't be surprised if a decent number of people, even hardcore fans, just flat out hate it at first. Even though Brand New is one of those bands you expect to mix things up, quite dramatically in fact, this is one of their most bold and ambitious mix up to date. The thing is, if you don't like this album on your first few listens, look, I don't blame you. I seriously don't. I was in that same camp, but man, stick with it. Put it aside for a little while if you have to and come back to it. I can almost guarantee you your perception of this thing will dramatically change upon each listen. This is an album you kind of have to unlearn everything you know about Brand New in order to really feel and understand its vibe, but once you can, Jesus Christ, that's a pretty face. If this is the final note in Brand New's career, then by God, I'd be hard pressed to think of a better note to go out on. Hell, it actually kind of sucks if they're ending things here because it sounds like they're starting to breach into some whole new exciting territory, but hey, if I had to end my musical career on this note, I'd be okay with it. Science fiction gets five Devil's Towers out of five.